Maxie. <coughs> I've been thinking. Should we do season three on the Dr. Joe show? <coughs> you sure? You sure it's a good idea? <coughs> Welcome to the Dr. Joe Show. I'm Joe, and today we are going to do something a little bit different. How many times have I said that before? Well, today we are going to do a short review. <laughs> what? <laughs> Holy shit! No way! That's impossible. There's no way Dr. Joe can do a short review. <laughs> Even when I have tried in the past to do a short review, it ended up being a three-part episode. Um, but no, seriously, we are going to start doing some short reviews. Today, we are smoking the Bolivar Coronas Jr. a la Habana. And uh, what a nice little cigar it is. What a nice little cigar it is, I'm telling you. Very cedary, a little sweet, a little spicy, bold flavors, coffee type notes right away, mm. a little earthy now, ooh, honest to God, an actual, a little bit, a little bit of a clove type note, very interesting pre-draw, you know, personally, I love smaller cigars. I really do. Um, I like a lot of flavor. I like cigars that pack a punch, you know. Big doesn't always mean better. I mean, <laughs> if, if you're looking... Look, I like to relax too. I like to make sure I have... You know, a lot of people say, and it's really true, that cigars are not about the nicotine. You know, it's not about trying to get, like, fucking blasted. But... You do want to relax, and that is a part of it. And if you're afraid that there's not going to be enough punch in a small cigar like this for you, you might be surprised. You really might be surprised, because trust me, I smoke. You know, big cigars, all types of cigars, strong cigars, a lot of Nicaraguan cigars, and this is usually more than satisfactory. Let me light up. And I will tell you a few little notes about the cigar itself. Oh, what a nice draw. 
what a nice draw. Just a tiny bit of resistance. Almost missed it on the match there. Just getting a little. Anyway, the Bolivar Coronas Jr. Small cigar, 42 ring gauge by 4.3 inches. And one little interesting fact I found online about this cigar. During 1980 to 1993, it was sold in the UK as the Amato Selecion G. Now, <laughs> I don't know what the f what that is. It sounds very odd to me, very kind of funny. The funny thing to me is that up till 93, that's how it was sold. 94 came and bang, no more of that. Guess what? 94 is when Habano S.A. was established. They came in and cleaned shop. So they said, whatever the hell this is, a model Celeste and G, what, what, what are we doing here? Everywhere else it's called a, uh, this is a pre-1960s release. This thing's been around forever. It's the Bolivar Coronas Jr. <laughs> Why are we calling it the Amato Celestion G? I have no idea. Who knows? Some rich, wealthy shop owner probably tried to put his name on it. Well, whatever happened, Habano Sese was having none of it. So it's just the Coronas Jr. But if you ever do hear somebody call one of these an Amato Celestion G, see, don't ever assume. Don't say, this guy is a dick. He has no, he has no idea what he's talking about. What the hell is an Amato Celestion G? Well, actually... <laughs> Maybe he's been around for a very long time and just hasn't smoked a Bolivar Coronas Jr. for quite a while. So, be careful what you say. Right away, plenty of salt on the draw, a little bit of spice on the tongue, nice tangy flavors, cedar, wood, earth, coffee notes, not too deep yet. Beautiful, beautiful cigar. And guess what, folks? 2014 right here, which brings me into a very interesting point, a very, very good thing um, that I wanted to talk about real quick. Sick period. You know, a lot of people stressing over it, emailing me, I got my cigars, but they're only six months old, so I'm not going to smoke any of them. I'm putting them away. They're sick. How, you don't know that. You don't know that. You, you didn't even smoke one. You know, if you open the box and you smell like a fermentation type aroma, a note of ammonia, a hint of ammonia, you know, to be quite frank, the smell actually, and this is disgusting, but it's more like hamster piss. If I have hamster cages or guinea pig cages and they pee in the cedar chips all the time, and if you don't clean it, you get that pungent, that's the ammonia smell of fermentation. Uh, and it's quite nasty. So if you're smelling your cigars and you're thinking to yourself, I think I smell it. No, you don't. <laughs> because if you did, you'd fucking know it. Um, you'd say, something's off here. So, uh, enough with this, you know, uh, everybody with the sick period, sick period, sick period, listen, a lot of Cuban cigars, most Cuban cigars smoke fine after about six months, in my experience, you know. Very few that, you know, and, and it actually tends to be the more mild cigars that seem to need more time, which makes sense. This makes sense. Hear me out here. More mild cigars use more Volato. Volato is only aged a year and under, a, 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 approximately a year, whereas Seiko two years, Lajero three years. This is the new Cuba for you. Since around 2006-7, and we didn't even know this, they've been aging their tobacco. Well, the more mild cigars contain more Volato. And Volato is only aged about a year. So this is what this is where the math and science come in. This is why I say it's so important to understand the concept. That's why I released that episode, that series on aging. And those first three videos, they aren't about how to age. They don't tell you what humidity to store your cigars out. They don't show you how to build a wine or what they tell you is why the aging process works. I'm stressing that it's extremely important to understand that because then you will be able to understand how your cigars age, which cigars are better for aging, wh why things are happening. Well, you're wondering, well, isn't stronger tobacco more potent? Shouldn't they be the ones that need more time to get past the sick period? Why are the mild cigars seeming to always taste bland or off uh, until after a year and a half or so? More volato, less aged tobacco in there. So that makes a lot of sense to me. 
excellent. I'm a man of reason, you know. Uh, everything happens for a reason. Everything, uh, in nature anyway, scientifically, things happen because, you know, cause and effect. There's a, there's a, if there's an effect, there's some sort of cause behind it. And that's what we do, we figure it out. Now, a little, you know, a little young. I taste it, but... But very nice, very nice. A little harsh through the nose still. And that's a funny thing. A Bolivar, even though they're strong, a nice Bolivar that's been aged a couple of years, and not even, you know, two, three years, depending on the size. A Royal Corona with two and a half, three years on it. Very smooth through the nose. Cuban cigars generally are. It's smoking lovely. Beautiful little ash going on there. You know, I just love little cigars like this. Little... If it's a little cigar, I like it strong. I like strong little cigars. I can deal with bigger cigars that are medium-bodied or even more mild. You know, um, generally, generally, the smaller they are, the stronger I want them. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I think we can do our first third now. Very nice. Very nice. See, more, more pepper building up now. Just like I remember the Bellicoso Finos, you know, uh, a tricky cigar because it seems to be woody and earthy all at the same time. Pre-draw had these great cedar notes. That's still there. It's, it's a very, it almost, when they put it through your nose, I almost get the, the sensation of, of like burning wood, but, but a nice thing. I don't, don't want to describe it the wrong way, like fire, like a fireplace, you know. It's very smoky. And um, there are some great notes of coffee, but not too strong, as strong as Bolivar's are, not too strong, kind of faint, actually, on that, on that level. It's a lot of salt, a lot of good, that, that twangy, tangy Cuban flavor, just really, really nice. Mm. Little hints of, like, in the aroma, almost like a vanilla-esque kind of something. It's just very sweet, a little floral, but more sweet, the aroma on this one. Very sweet, very sweet aroma. Just really nice for a young um, Cuban cigar. You know, I love it. I love these little things. And um, I wish they sold them in 50 cabinets. I really do. I really do. Because I think... Simply put, a 50 cabinet is just a better format for a small cigar like this. You know, age-wise, in, in, as far as aging goes, the cigars are small. You want to keep them in a big bundle. You want to keep them close together. You want to have a lot of them. The more tobacco you have in one area, the more stuff can go on. You know, um, that's why I love Partagas Shorts. But they still make 50 cabinets, thank God, of Partagas Shorts. And they make 50 cabs of Laranaga. Uh, petite Coronas also. So I don't know why they don't make 50 cabs of these things. That's just nuts. That's just nuts. They should also make 50 cabs of the Bellicoso Finos. They really should. I think they may. You know, Bolivar has been progressively becoming more and more popular over the years, uh, especially since Americans started ordering online. Mm. Strong through the nose. Very peppery. Now I'm getting a little bit of that that youth in there, definitely through the nose. You can you can sense it absolutely. So yeah, on a connoisseur's level, it needs some time, you know. But on a smoker's level, on a guy who just wants to smoke a lot of cigars and and, and smoke a nice, strong, tasty cigar, no problem, you know, no problem. Leathery, beefy, peppery, black pepper coming in. Much stronger now. Getting into the second third here. Pretty fantastic change up for such a small cigar all of a sudden. And my ash didn't fall off either. You know, heat is relatively similar at this point. Um, well, you know, it'll be. So I'm smoking along, hitting on the uh, second third here, and. First of all, this was a very well-made Coronas Jr. These ashes are holding incredibly, incredibly. 
Really, really nice. Very good construction. Very good draw. Very good amount of smoke coming through. Burning beautifully. No touch-ups needed. Just, just a perfect experience for the end of the day. Small cigar, you know. And this really isn't any time type of cigar, but it's just, it's just perfect for right now. <clears throat> Flavors got a lot stronger, especially now getting almost toward the final third. Um, deeper coffee notes, a lot of black pepper, a lot of meaty flavors, a lot, you know, not more salt, really. Salt is kind of not dying down, but just definitely not picking up. A little more spice, um, some leathery flavors, some deeper earthy flavors, but the whole thing together is just great. And, and to top it all off, on top of it, there's just this creamy, sweet aroma. Just really, really nice. It has, it has these hints of almost like a vanilla-type um, note there. Just, just great. Just great. Great, great, great cigar. And, and wonderful level of uh, overall power, strength. Really, really nice. Mm. Mm. It's getting more twangy now. More twangy. Almondy, but man, it's just, just great. I'm telling you know, funny thing, a lot of similarities to a good Nicaraguan, a lot of similarities to a good Nicaraguan cigar, you know. And I think a lot of people will see that if they smoke more Cubans, a lot of Cubans. I mean, like, cause, you know, smoking one or two from this brand and that brand is fine. You have to smoke a lot of Cubans, as many as you do Nicaraguans, to make a really good comparison, and you're gonna find that there are a lot of similarities, especially with the stronger cigars. Bolivar, a lot of similarities there. You know, uh, just a really nice cigar. So, that's it for this third. Um, on these short reviews, I'm not even really going to give them a, a number. I'm going to give them basically a thumbs up or a thumbs down and, you know, my overall thoughts as far as who would like the cigar, whether you should smoke it or not, that type of thing. I'm not going to start going into, you know, on these quick reviews, a whole big, uh, you know, oh, 8.5, you know. We'll save that for the, for the uh, lengthier stuff. So, um, I'm sure this one, though, if I was doing a whole big extravaganza on it, would have to get something like a 9 so far. You know, and I have a feeling it's going to be a great nub because it's just that type of draw. Ha hmm. <laughs> ha! Perfect cigar hand. <laughs> See that? I was like this, smoking, the ash went, fell, popped here, and went right in the freaking ashtray. <laughs> it's like fucking perfect. And I'm over here because I knew it was going to fall. Ah. Rebound. Off the backboard. Two points. Wonderful. That made me happy, because I was having such a good experience with this cigar. And lately, over this past week, every time I'm about to have a good time, something comes along and fucks the shit out of it. So, <laughs> that's what's been happening lately. And, for instance, if I was here having this great moment and smoking, and all of a sudden the ash just went plop all over my desk, and I had to clean it, you know... No one wants that. No one needs that. I don't deserve that. I didn't do anything to anyone, really. I just come on already. Fucking karma, baby. Help me out here. So, uh, that made me happy. <laughs> it's the little things, my friends. It is the little things. Speaking of little things, this is becoming a little thing. I'll be back in a minute with the last third, and we'll wrap this episode of Dr. Joe's Short Reviews up. So, here we are with our... Final third, I'm into the final third, and I came back a little soon. I'm already pinching it. It's getting a little hot, and I gotta say, as much as I enjoyed the cigar, the youth is affecting it a little at the end here, and so is the strength and power. It's it's not becoming really bland. It's losing flavor at this point from the heat uh, and the fact that it's just so wet and it's just gotten, you know, all the stuff flavor sucked out of it. Um... Oh, that was a nice one. 
there's still some juice left here, but um, you know these small cigars they turn they tend to burn a little hot at the end, and you really can't you can't hold it anymore. You have to pinch it. You know at this point you have to nub. So I'm nubbing it, getting everything else I can out of it. But let me tell you, I have not had a Cuban in a while. That and maybe it's because here's the reason I think. Because when I smoke cigars, like I said before, if I'm not doing a review, I get perfect ashes all the time. When I'm doing a review and I keep talking and everything and messing around, and it, it, it just makes a mess, it's hard. But with the short review, I was able to pay more attention to this in between, and I got these perfect ashes here. Just incredible. Great construction on here. Great, great, just filled just right. Any more, the draw would have been restricted. Any less, well there would have been less tobacco in it. Even if they put a little less, I don't think it would have been quite underfilled. It was very dense, very well rolled. Ah, and it's nubbing beautifully. Just beautifully. Perfect little cigar. Perfect. Perfect little cigar. So, we're wrapping it up, and uh, I just got a tiny little nubule left here. Feeling very good. Could smoke another, but definitely don't really want to. <laughs> Not another one of these anyway. I might switch to something a little more medium bodied. Um, very powerful. Very powerful. Un talk about getting your kick in with a small cigar. Very, very powerful. And uh, I'm losing the battle. Oh, there we go. Delicious. Right down to the last drop. Halfway through the last third, I thought I sensed flavors kind of getting a little bland, dying down. Maybe it was just a little spot with some filler missing. I don't know because, bang, all the flavor just came back. And I'm trying to suck every little last drop out of this thing. Don't go out, baby. There's no way to relight you at this point. <laughs> Ah, that's it. Once you start seeing those airy... That's it, folks. That is it. So our last third, I'm just going to let it burn. The aroma is just wonderful. Um, very strong, a little more spicy, peppery, but no bitterness. You know, just a touch of leather, but really, really not much. It doesn't have those, those deep, deep, deep coffee flavors. That's what I like about this cigar. It's strong without saturating the palate with those very dark flavors. You know, nice twang, nice salt, nice spice, very good Cuban flavor, um, sweet aroma, just sweet. Usually it's always very floral with a little sweetness to it. This cigar's aroma was very sweet with a little floral to it. But as you know, with Bolivar, a lot more Lajero, less Seiko, and way less Velado, just very, very little. Velado is what gives it that floral aroma, you know. A cigar heavy on Velado would be a very aromatic cigar. So this cigar here doesn't have that, it has just a touch of that floral. And the aroma is much more sweet than you would get from something like, say, a La Gloria Cubana or even a, a Romeo and Juliet or a Hoya de Monterey. Even a lot of things. There are very few Cuban cigars, actually there are no Cuban cigars with as much Lajero as a Bolivar. There just aren't. Maybe some of the special releases like the La Cepcion, uh, stuff like that, but very, very few. Even Cohiba or the D4, not as much. Not as much. That's it. She's out. I'm going to put her right there. I'm going to show you how perfectly this thing, I didn't drop a single flake this time, and I'm going to show you how beautifully she burned. Perfect. That is the entire cigar right there. Three chunks. Perfect. Perfect cigar. Got to get a box of these. Got to get a box of these. So that's it. That was our final third. And all together, well, I think you can already tell the way I feel about this cigar. Anytime, any place, as long as you don't mind some power. Uh, definitely not 
a good cigar for the beginner or somebody who's never smoked cigars or somebody who's not accustomed to nicotine. Um, but anybody who wants something with a lot of flavor, punch, power, and wants it in a small format that they can smoke anytime, you can smoke half this cigar and feel good, you know? Um, and you smoke the whole thing, well, then you feel like I do, which is fucking great. Wonderful cigar. Please make 50 cabinets. Love them. And more than that, this particular Bolivar Coronas Jr. 2014 is just a amazing specimen. It's perfect. I mean, you've seen the pictures. Dark, oily, just everything you want this t this particular brand to be. Never mind this Patola. But... <clears throat> wonderful cigar. So that's about it. We're going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching this short review. And like I said, next time I'm not going to do all the explaining, so they will be a lot shorter. We're going to try to keep them under 10 minutes. They probably range into the 15 minute, you know, but they're only going to be one part. One part. That's it. And no 20 minute part either. 10 minutes, 15 if I have something exciting to talk about, but that's about it. I hope you like this new idea. Uh, I hope you will join me for many, 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 many more cigars to come. And please, if you enjoy the long format show and you do really, don't worry. It's not going anywhere. It will be coming out on schedule every weekend until the season is over. At which time I will announce said season being over. So, without any further ado, let me wish you a good evening. And please, keep on smoking. Say goodnight, Max. <laughs> <laughs>